الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والأنثى إن سعيكم لشتى فأما من أعطى واتقى وصدق بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وأما من بخل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى صدق الله العظيم The ayahs that have just decided from Surah Al-Layl The message of these ayahs has been given in different parts of Al-Quran Al-Kareem in many different surahs But the reason I chose to recite these ayahs at the beginning because this may be a surah that most of us are familiar with and we do recite it sometimes. Even children who learn the short surahs, they do learn these surahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. So hopefully, inshallah, if we be attentive and listen to the message of these ayahs of Al-Quran carefully, Hopefully whenever we recite these ayahs during our prayers or any other time or children reciting it during class will help us refresh our memories with this message and remind ourselves of the message of the ayah. Without having to go into too many details and even the time would not allow for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs have told us two different directions of life. Two different directions of life. One direction is called the direction of Al-Yusra and the other direction is called the direction of Al-Usra. Two words are used. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ Lil Yusra. This is the direction. Wa Amaman Bakhi, Wastagna, Wakadaba Bil Husna, Fasan Yasiruhu, Lil Usra, Yusra and Usra, two different directions. And before telling us the direction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that each and every human being in this world is putting his effort, her effort in achieving one of these two directions. Inna sa'yakum lashatta. Your efforts are different. If you take the efforts of each and every human being and analyze what this person is doing with his and her life, there will be only two directions. You won't find no third direction in the world. SubhanAllah, look at the beauty of Quran. Such a broad topic. The direction of each and every human being's life. Someone is studying, someone is working, someone doesn't want to do nothing, someone is in the hospital, someone is treating them. I mean, people in all different fields of life. There are people who don't want to do nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if a, if a person is not doing anything, still he falls in one of these two directions. Because if he's not doing something, then he has to face the consequences of that. And... He has to face the result of it. He will see the result of not doing anything. In the sayakum lishatta, your efforts are different. And then take every effort that you put in your life, it will be going in one of these two directions: the direction of al-yusra and the direction of al-usra. Now, quickly, what does this yusra and usra means? Yusra means the direction that will make your future easy. 
This is yusr. As, uh, make things easy. And also difficulty. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Alam nishrah like a sadrak. We all recite. Fa inna ma'al usri yusra. With difficulty, there is an ease. So usr is difficulty, hardship. And yusr is ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as we put our life into certain direction, then accordingly we will be treated in this world and in akhirah. It's not only in akhirah. This is direction of this life, so accordingly we will be treated in this world and in akhirah. One direction is, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى As far as those who give. Give what? A big problem that is in our understanding of Qur'an is, normally we relate the message of Qur'an according to our understanding and we limit the words of Allah according to our understanding. As soon as the word give comes in, Right away, I'm looking at my pocket. That gives means I have to give up money. And that's something that I don't want to do. Give what? Give, give anything. Anything and everything. Look at the word at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ If you go through the beauty of the language, we will realize they spend out of everything, something out of everything that we have given them. Min in Arabic language means some, from. Ma means everything, something from everything that you have. So, look at the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have gifted with. Our health. So we share this with others. With those who do not have this type of health and they may need to do things, achieve things and they are not able because they don't have that health. There are people who cannot achieve a lot of things because they are not able to do it. They don't have the strength to do it. So here, give. Give him what? Let this person who is Deprived of this ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have a feeling and get the understanding that no, if I don't have it, my brother has it and I can use it from him. If I can't do this work, inshallah, I will call my brother, he will come and do it for me. This is the habit of giving. <coughs> my lawnmower is not working. And I have no way of cutting my loan. No, I'm not stuck. I know that my brother next door has it, and he will come right away, and if I tell him, he would even cut the grass for me. Give. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They spend something out of everything that we have given them. We have given them time, they share it with others. We have given them energy, they share it. We have given them knowledge, they share it. Subhanallah, just imagine, looking just at our community here, we have people from all different fields, people who have experience in all different backgrounds. If we put our heads together, what is it that we cannot achieve? But each and every person feels that I'm stuck, and we are stuck. And the Muslims are stuck, and the community is stuck, and we can't do this. We have people who have those abilities. If we put their abilities at work, if we tell people, okay, this is my field, you need me anytime, I'm here for you. Let people know that I'm there. Let my brothers, my sisters know that if they need help in this field, I'm here to help them. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They spend something out of everything that we have given them. They share it with others. فَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى As far as those who give. At this time, the way me and you are looked at in this society, 
that these people came from somewhere to take things from us, not to give us. Because you could not live in your own hometown, in your home country. And this is why you were troubled over there. You had difficulties over there. So you had to leave that place and then you took refuge in my country. So you came here to get some peace of mind for your soul. You didn't come here to give me anything. You did not have all of these luxuries of the life that you have here, that we used to enjoy here. So you people left your country and came over here and you burdened, burdened us with everything, all of your problems, and you came just to take these things from us. You came to use things from us. You came to take things from us. You did not come to give us. And if today we would, have, we would like to get up and say, just tell the people, no, no, that's wrong. You have a wrong concept in your mind. So tell us, what did you give us? What did you give us? We had these homes before you even came here. All of these nice gardens and everything else was around here before you people came in here. What did you give us? Muhajireen, people who did Hijrah to Medina Munawwara. When they migrated to Medina Munawwara, they had nothing with them. So they were totally dependent on the people of Ansar, the people of Medina to help them and to support them. Muhajireen continuously had this feeling that we are only taking from Ansar. We are not giving them anything. So once they went and they complained to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, this is the feeling that we have. And it's really disturbing us. Just imagine the type of understanding these people had and the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raising them. That at least they had the thought up to this day, most of us never even thought of this, that I'm taking, what is it that I'm giving back? I'm taking from the society. What is it that I'm giving the society in return? Oh, I'm paying high taxes. This is not what people want. There is something more valuable that me and you have. That we can offer the world. There is something that people are missing. They are looking for it. And we have the key to it. Any, each and every person that is out every morning out of his home and then going through the traffic hours and staying on the road for hours and then spending eight hours at workplace, no food, nothing, and go back home tired, what everyone is looking for, they're looking for peace of mind. And we have the key to get. Allah <clears throat> bidikrillahi The peace of mind is only in the remembrance of Allah. Show people how to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will get the peace of mind. We have something to offer the world and something that people are looking for. Each and every person is looking for it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the muhajireen, you have a very valid question here, but I would tell you something to offer these people as long as you are not able to give them anything from the worldly point of view, worldly gain, anything uh, of material things you cannot give them back, I'll tell you something to give them. Two things. Number one, keep on making dua for them. Keep on making dua for them. Number two, always talk good about them. Be grateful to what they are doing for you. This is studying that point, taking the first step towards having the developing the habit of giving. Making dua that subhanallah, such a nice person. Such a nice and a kind person, so helpful. And he's losing all the benefits of akhirah. Ya Allah, please 
give him the Ya May Allah guide him. Guide her. This would start developing the habits in our hearts of giving back, of giving people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he told the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam how to be of the habit of always looking forward to give rather than take. He gave an instruction. The giver hand is always better than the taker one. The one that is giving is always better than the one that is taking. And he developed that habit in the Sahaba Ridwanullahi with such so much importance and confidence in them, they knew and they were so confident that I would always win if I'm a giver. And I'm a loser when I become a taker. A Sahabi, very amazing situation. A Sahabi comes to Rasulullah well-known Sahabi. His name is Hakim ibn Hizam radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, Hakim, do bay'ah on my hands. Ya Rasulullah, I have done bay'ah on Islam, on Hijrah. My bay'ah is done. He thought Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may have forgot. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, no. I'm taking a bay'ah on a totally different thing now. Okay, Ya Rasulullah, I'm ready. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grabs his hands. And he says, Hakim, this bay'ah is for you will never ask any person anything throughout, throughout your life. Hakim ibn Hizam radiallahu anhu, sometime he would be riding his horse and he would drop something, he would not ask someone to pass it to him. He would come down and pick it up himself because this is the habit he has developed by being around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Don't ask for anything, always give. I'm asking the person for help. Let me help the person rather than taking his help. SubhanAllah, it's a habit that needs to be developed within us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah in Quran al kareem which narrates a very similar incident about this habit of giving. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in the masjid after Salat al-Isha. And a person walks into the masjid, newcomer to Medina. No one knows this person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a sahabi to his home, go and find out if there is any food at home. He comes back to inform Ya Rasulullah. They said they have nothing except water. There is no dinner for us tonight. We will only be drinking water tonight. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to few sahaba that were sitting there, who would take this guest? This is my guest. He is my guest. Who would take him for my sake and feed him tonight and take care of him for the night and bring him back to me at Salat al-Fajr? Abu Talha al-Ansari radiyallahu anhu is sitting there and says, Ya Rasulullah, I would take him with me. Jazakallah khair, take him. He goes home. And he asked his wife, is there any food at home? She says, nothing for me and you, but I have little food for our children. That's all we have, little food for our children. And you can hear the cry of the children, they are crying. I didn't feed them yet, I was waiting for you. And now I'm going to feed them. He says, no, no, wait. Tonight we have a very important guest. We have a blessing of Allah in our home tonight. So somehow make the children go to sleep without it. And we will feed all of this food to our guest. And then he says to his wife, Pretend that you are fixing the candle and put it off so he won't know that we are not eating. And this is exactly what they did. The whole family, including the young children in the house, they went to sleep while they were crying. 
no food for them. Imagine parents taking away the food of their children and giving it away, giving it out to a stranger, a person they don't even know who the person is. But all they know that this person is is a guest and he must be hungry. In the morning he goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As soon as he says salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, Talha, Allah is so pleased with your with what you have done with your guest last night. And Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam came to me in the middle of the night and he revealed these ayahs. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا They give others preference over themselves even if they are in desperate need. <laughs> we fail to give the society something that they were in need of. And this is why today we are just looked at as these people. Who are these people? What are the benefit of having these people around? Because they know what we took, they don't know what we have given. And this is exactly, now look at the two words that I talked about at the very beginning. Yusra and Usra. Two directions of life. Direction that will make everything easy. This would have made everything so easy for us if we were of the habit of giving, giving and giving and not looking at what we take in return. The other direction is of an usra, the direction of difficulty. <laughs> Those who are holding everything to themselves. If I have an extra hour, let me fix my home. Subhanallah. Why not go and ask my neighbor if he needs something? There are people who are crying in the neighborhood. Not necessarily if they have money, they have everything. They may need something else. They need someone to talk to. Let me go and ask people around me. If there is anything that I can do for them, I can do something for the community. I can do something for the house of Allah. I can go and clean the masjid. Whatever that may be. Giving, the habit of giving will make the person think that I have to do something in return now. And we need to understand, we are living in a society where this thing is really appreciated. People really appreciate when you do something for them. You know, all of these information centers. If you look at it from the Islamic point of view, this is all sadaqah. If we do it for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the pleasure, pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is sadaqah. Irshaduka tariq fi ardi dalal like a sadaqah. When you guide people to the path and you tell them what the direction to the places they have to go to, this is sadaqah. The concept is there. But our own input is not there. And if we start putting our input in the light of the Quran and the Hadith, we will, people will be amazed. People will be amazed to see how much we can put and in what directions we can put. Because Rasulullah wasallam's whole life was in the same direction. And this is what everyone loved about him. A newcomer would come, he would just love Rasulullah wasallam. Because he sees the person, he sees this Prophet of Allah, he is just giving, giving, giving. And when it comes to taking, he says, no, no, go and give it to someone else. A Sahabi comes, a Sahabiya. She came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa She said she saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wearing his old dress with about 15 patches on his dress. She goes back home. She saw a new dress for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Came back the next day, Ya Rasulullah. I made it with my own hands for you, Ya Rasulullah. Jazakillah khair. He takes it from her. He goes home, changes his clothes, he puts on the new dress, comes back. A sahabi walks into the masjid. Ya Rasulullah, such a nice dress. Looks so nice, mashallah. Can I have it, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, sure. He goes into the house, changes it again. He wears the old one, comes back, and he gives the Sahabi this one. He says, take it. Other Sahabas sitting around, they were upset. So after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left, they approached the Sahabi and said, you know, that was so bad. You know, that Sahabi, she came and gave him a gift, and she told him, I made it especially for you. And he got a new dress after a long time, and he accepted it. That Sahabi said, you know, the reason I took it from him was not because I want a new dress. 
I wanted to use this to be my janazah, to be my kafan when I die. And that is the reason, so I wanted to have the blessing of having the clothing of Rasulullah to be used as my kafan. That's the only reason I took it from him. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلْ As far as those who hold it to themselves. وَاسْتَغْنَى What does istighna mean? And they consider themselves to be independent. I don't need anyone. I'm making enough. I'm making good. I have everything. I don't need anyone. I don't need to talk to go, go and talk to other people. بَخِلْ وَاسْتَغْنَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the direction of al-yusra. You are making your life difficult for you. You are making the life of, the life of other people around you difficult for them. You are making your life difficult for yourself in this world and in other. This is why. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith and inshallah will end with this hadith. <coughs> On the day of judgment, a person will come with mountains of sins. And he have not done enough good deeds. The order will be given to take him towards Jahannam. This person will turn towards Allah and says, Ya Allah, how about your Rahmah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call him back. Sure, my Rahmah is there. Bring me someone that you had Rahmah on, that you had mercy on, that can witness for you, even if that is a bird, even if it is an animal. Bring me something that can witness that you had mercy on it, and I will have mercy on you today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to learn these teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adopt them in our lives and get into the habit of having rahmah kindness and mercy for others and get the habit of giving others and always trying to do the best we can for the, for others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wal muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah